allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. confronts those challenges, and I'll begin by leading the fight. We're cutting the edge and we're innovative and we think out of the box and we can have options and we have choices and we feel that it would be best for our students. I'm the type of principal who wants to make sure that the playing field is, is level. The most rewarding thing is when children come to me and say, I like coming to school, Ms. Williams. Dream with me of a Los Angeles that's the leading economic and cultural center in the world. 30 years ago, I wouldn't have wanted to build in the city of Los Angeles. Today, with the mayor's new case management division, we designed and built this beautiful building. They've streamlined the permitting process from conception to completion, made the process very simple. This nation has this huge unemployment issue. For us to be able to create LA as the catalyst for keeping manufacturing in this country is very exciting, bringing jobs to LA. It's a great pleasure and a deep honor to introduce to you the mayor of Los Angeles, Antonio Villaraigosa. <laughs> City Council, City Controller Gruel, City Attorney Trutanich, School Board President Garcia, Superintendent Dacey, members of the School Board, Commissioners, Community Leaders, Distinguished Guests, Friends, and Family. Thank you for coming together this evening, and thank you to Paramount Pictures for hosting us in this beautiful setting. This is a special place for me. I first gave my swore myself to office or was sworn to office here at Paramount in 1994. This has always been a part of the city that I've represented. This is my second to last report to you on the state of Los Angeles. My final term as mayor will come to a close in 14 short months, or as some would say, in 14 long months. <laughs> now don't get wistful. Here's what I say. I say we don't have a moment to lose. I say that in the coming 14 months, we're going to wake up each and every morning reminding ourselves of the need for speed. And not only that. Every single day, we're going to go to work with determination to look forward, not back. Satchel Page said it best, never look back. They may be gaining on you. <laughs> Angelinos, we're not looking back. That's not what we do. And we don't have a moment to lose. In the coming months, we're not just going to finish how we started. We're going to finish what we started. I promised you the day I took office that my administration would be characterized by our willingness to think big and take on our biggest challenges. As long as I'm your mayor, we're going to dig deep. We're going to double down and we're going to bring home big results. Why? Because we must. Over the last two years, our economy has been growing. That's the good news. But that growth has been tenuous and uneven. How do you describe the human dimensions of a 13% unemployment rate? A rate which dramatically undercounts the problem 
especially in our most vulnerable neighborhoods. And this is where it all starts. We have to do everything we can to accelerate the recovery, house by house, block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood, to put people back to work. That's why, as president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, I've traveled to Washington, D.C. frequently in the last year. It's simple. If we're going to move the needle on jobs, L.A. needs a productive partner inside the Beltway. And I have a message for Congress. L.A. matters. Cities matter. Cities represent the hopes and dreams of America, the ideas and the ideals of its people. Cities and metro regions are driving the U.S. economy and powering our nation's recovery. That's right. From downtown to the suburbs, over 90% of the nation's economic output and over 85% of our country's jobs are being generated right here in our cities. Yet, over the last three years, cities have done more with considerably less. We balance painful budgets. Cities have withstood and absorbed a great retreat from Washington and Sacramento. Less money for cops, the elimination of community redevelopment, a realignment of our criminal justice system that places even greater pressures on local government. So, we've gone to Washington with a message. Cities are going to do their part. Now we need Congress to do theirs. We need Congress to act on jobs. We need Congress to pass a transportation bill to make the smart investments we need in transportation, infrastructure, and workforce development. And we need Congress to support innovative policies like America Fast Forward. It's actually a simple and straightforward idea. Help local governments speed up the construction of locally funded road and rail projects with low interest financing. Over the last year, we built an impressive coalition for this powerful idea. 188 mayors from across the country, Democrat and Republican, have pledged their support for America Fast Forward. The AFL-CIO, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce have both signed on. And folks, I don't have to tell you, it doesn't get more bipartisan than that. Labor supports the idea because they understand that we need a program that will generate a million jobs. The Chamber supports it because they understand we can't get our economy really moving again without 21st century infrastructure. We need to build our future, and we need to build it today. Now, thanks to the leadership of Senator Barbara Boxer and Representative John Micah, coalition of partners from across the country, the America Fast Forward plan is a centerpiece of the transportation bill. Last month, the bill passed the Senate on a bipartisan vote of 74 to 22. Fortunately, it hit a snag in the House. The House today delayed action on that transportation bill for the 10th time, making the transportation bill three years past due. I will take the fight for L.A. straight to D.C. We don't need more partisan gridlock. It's time for common sense for the common good. We need America fast forward. But that's just the first part of my message today. The second part, regardless of what Washington does, we're not going to wait another day. You see, the state of our city is resilient and resourceful. Angelinos remain creative and confident. We will make the decisions and promote the policies that will generate jobs and grow our economy. We will think big, and we will be bold. Four years ago, over two-thirds of L.A. County voters approved Measure R in the middle of a recession. $40 billion investment in more transit lines, safer roads and highways, and better, more efficient bus and rail service. 
with Measure R, Los Angeles moved forward while well, Washington and Sacramento took a step back. Voters boldly initiated one of the largest community improvement projects in the country. It funds major freeway projects and gives the 88 cities across the county money to make local transportation improvements. More importantly, it funds 12 rail and bus lines across Los Angeles. It connects light rail lines in downtown Los Angeles that will link West LA, Long Beach, East LA, and the San Gabriel Valley. It connects LAX to the regional transit network. It funds the first rail line to West LA in modern history. And it pays for three lines in the San Fernando Valley. all mean? It means that Angelinos will have more transit options. It means that Angelinos will spend less time in their cars and more time doing the things that matter. Playing with their kids, talking with their neighbors, enjoying a day at the beach. It means making Los Angeles the capital of sustainability, not smog. It means remaking the face of LA and finally taking us beyond sprawl. In the last seven years, we opened up the Orange Line, the East Side Extension, we secured billions in new funding, we started planning and designing a dozen new projects. We have four major lines under construction today. The Exposition Line, the Orange Line Extension, the Foothill Extension of the Gold Line to Azusa, and Expo Phase Two to Santa Monica. Next week, we will open the Expo Line Phase 1 to Culver City. Less than two months later, in June, the Orange Line Extension to Chatsworth will open for service. By next year, we expect to start construction on three more projects. The Crenshaw Line, the Regional Connector, and the Wilshire Subway. For those of you who were born and raised here, this investment in mass transit is unprecedented, and we know it. And if that wasn't enough return on our local investment, over the lifetime of Measure R, We'll put over 410,000 people to work and make it easier for Angelinos to get to work. Now, you know, Measure R taught us something about Los Angeles. This is a city willing to invest in itself. This is a city willing to lead and chart a new path. And that is why today I am announcing we will be asking voters to continue Measure R until the voters themselves decide to end it. You know, by, by extending Measure R, we'll create jobs, we'll relieve traffic congestion, we'll complete all of the rail projects in one decade instead of three, with these new resources in place, we can build faster, more efficiently, and at a lower cost to you. We'll measure traffic relief in years, not decades. Projects that were scheduled to be completed close to the middle of the century, game-changing projects like the Sepulveda Pass rail line under the 405 and the Wilson subway can now be completed in little over a decade. Now, we're currently investing $4 billion to modernize LAX. When we're done in 2017, we'll have an airport equal to our style and our spirit. But according to the long-range transportation plan, we'll have to wait 
till 2029 to have a direct transit connection to LAX. This just isn't good enough. By extending Measure R, we could be done in six years. I know some of you find it very difficult to get out of your car. But extending Measure R will not only benefit our rail system, it could accelerate key highway projects, it will create jobs, and it will boost our economy. It will bring us closer to the vision of Los Angeles that Mayor Tom Bradley spent his whole life fighting for. A vision of the most diverse city in the world brought closer together by a world-class transit system. Our efforts to create jobs won't stop there. We've seen great success in our jobs team. Just this past year, the electric manufacturers BYD and Coda opened their North American headquarters here in Los Angeles. Lucky Jeans recently opened its new headquarters with 250 employees in the Arts District. Google, with over 600 employees, now resides at Silicon Beach in Venice. Last year, last year, Farmers Insurance opened a new operations center with 1,200 employees in Woodland Hills. Gensler, the world's largest architecture firm, has brought its headquarters and its 350 employees to our downtown. I don't have to tell you, these firms could have gone anywhere. They had many suitors, but they chose Los Angeles. They chose Los Angeles because we're creating the economic ecosystem where businesses like these will thrive. Businesses that will generate good paying jobs in the high growth industries of the future. We're changing the way Los Angeles does business by making it easier to do business in Los Angeles. If you want to build something in LA, you no longer have to go to more than a dozen different departments for project guidance. And if you're a new business, you don't have to pay a business tax for the first three years that you're here. According to the Office of Finance, the number of new firms grossing $500,000 and above has doubled in LA since we implemented the business tax holiday. So we ought to extend it. We created the Mayor's Office of Small Business to develop sound and strategic policies for the nation's epicenter for small business. Now, each year, our city signs over 2,000 contracts for goods and services worth nearly $2 billion. Our recently enacted local preference ordinance gives local businesses an 8% competitive advantage when they bid on these contracts. We pass this ordinance because we want local dollars to go to local businesses and create local jobs. <laughs> the Los Angeles region exports $80 billion in goods, and the export sector supports over 530,000 jobs. Now, these are big numbers, and we want to make them even bigger. 95% of the world's consumers live beyond our borders. We want them to buy goods that say, Made in L.A. <laughs> so, we've created the Los Angeles Regional Export Council to encourage local businesses to grow their markets and to become sex successful exporters. We've leveraged our unique municipal assets, our port, our airport, our utility, to drive investment in L.A. While the Port's Clean Truck Program has dramatically reduced pollution throughout our region, it's also pumped a billion dollars in the economy as trucking companies have invested in state-of-the-art trucks. The DWP is one of the key partners 
of our Clean Tech Incubator. The incubator's new Lucrez Innovation Campus will break ground later this year. When it's done, it will provide office and workspace for 20 to 30 startups. And Los Angeles will continue to grow as a magnet for green companies and as a greener, healthier place to work and to live. Now, all of these initiatives have added significantly to our economic development toolkit. But there's one critical tool still missing. Unlike other major cities, we don't have a dedicated economic development organization to craft a citywide business growth and job creation strategy. Without a strategic vision, without collaboration and coordination, on the heels of losing our community redevelopment agency, we're missing critical opportunities to tap the potential of our economic assets. As we emerge from the recession and as our economy begins to pick up, the time is right to correct this flaw. We need an engine of economic development that can target City Hall's woeful lack of customer focus. Our rules and processes are still too complex. We need an organization that can tackle the stubborn problem of economic opportunity. We have 720,000 Angelinos living on the wrong side of the poverty line. That's a city the size of San Francisco. We must take the vital mission of bringing the benefits of economic growth to every part of LA. If our economy is to work, it has to work for everyone. Create private sector jobs, generate revenue, encourage economic opportunity. These are our goals. In my budget, I'll propose $2.5 million in initial funding to create the economic development organization to reach these milestones. We'll work with the city council and let everyone know that LA is open for business. Now we will not capitalize on the investments that we've made in our infrastructure, and we will not realize the full potential of the forward-thinking policies we put into place if our fiscal house <coughs> is not in order. In the last three years, we have faced some of the most challenging city budgets in generations. We've made the tough decisions. We've had to cut services and programs. We've eliminated entire departments. We've increased employee contributions toward retiree benefits, and we've established a new pension tier for future sworn employees. These measures have saved hundreds of millions of dollars and have substantially reduced our structural deficit. But we must continue to chart a more sustainable path forward. So the budget I will release will be balanced. This budget is prudent. This budget is responsible. This budget will protect vital services that Angelinos rely on. And this budget will ensure that the city stays on a trajectory of long-term fiscal stability. It will continue our steady and significant progress toward eliminating our structural deficit. It will include reforms to our civilian pension fund. It will ask city employees to share in the increased cost of their health benefits. By working in partnership with the city council, I'm confident that we will let the common sense guide the common good and we will build a stronger Los Angeles for the families we serve and for the generations to come. Now bringing our far-flung metropolis together with new rails and roads, leveraging our infrastructure investment to put Angelinos back to work, supporting the businesses of the future that will offer the jobs of the future, these are the good policies, but they're more than that. They're a means of building a better, a more hopeful Los Angeles for the next generation. You see, through bitter experience and shared history, we've learned what can happen when too many Angelinos live without hope. 
How can we measure the state of our city today without remembering how 20 years ago, this month, Los Angeles erupted into violence? Neighborhoods burned. 53 people died. Thousands more were bruised and battered. Smoke hung over the city, burning eyes and searing our soul. The death and damage of those six days finally forced us to come to grips with the hard truth. L.A. was a city divided. The Los Angeles of 2012 is a different city. Los Angeles of 2012 is a better city. Somewhere in the heavens, Tom Bradley is smiling today. The sixth, the two decades since those six days in April, we forged a new partnership between the LAPD and the community, a partnership based on respect. We changed the culture of policing in L.A. and enshrined constitutional policing as the bedrock principle of the LAPD. We recruited a new generation of officers. We now have a force that reflects the many different communities it serves. On a per capita basis, crime is as low today as when Eisenhower was in the White House and Warren was in the State House. But we're a better city, not just because we're a safer city. We're a better city because we've also learned to celebrate our diversity. We're proud of it. We're a better city today because we've reached out beyond the lines of class and color and have come together in a common purpose. One half of the funding for our Summer Night Lights program comes from corporations and philanthropy from all across the city. Because they understand that what happens in a park in Pacoima touches us all. Now throughout Los Angeles, parents, teachers, students, civic and community groups have come together to support school reform across the city, not just in their neighborhoods. They understand that the educational future of our children must not be determined by a lottery or a zip code. So together, we fought and together we've begun to change the daily lives of our children. In the last seven years, despite devastating budget cuts, the number of LA schools meeting the state goal of 800 on the Academic Performance Index, API, has more than doubled. While low so scoring schools, those with an API below 650, have been reduced from one in three to one in 10. Since 2000, <laughs> since 2005, we've doubled the number of charter schools. But more importantly, we've seen a nearly five-fold increase in the number of charters scoring 800 or above on the API. Since 1996, voter-approved bond initiatives have brought in nearly $20 billion, allowing us to build 111 new schools. When we started, we had 227 overcrowded schools on multi-track calendars. By fall, there will only be three. <laughs> LA's public school choice initiative, centered on teacher-led reform and a no-excuses mindset. It sparked aggressive turnaround efforts at 140 schools. And our partnership for Los Angeles schools has seen results. API scores are up 50 points over the last three years, which means we're outpacing both the district and the state. Our students are moving forward. They're going places. Let's help them pick up the pace. Let's work together to offer Los Angeles families more and better 
educational options. Let's work together to turn our schools into academies of achievement rather than factories of failure. Together, let's open the door of opportunity for all of LA's children. The writer Anne Lamott reminds us about the power of hope. She said, hope begins in the dark. The stubborn hope that if you show up and try to do the right thing, the dawn will come. Angelinos, we can't be discouraged by the critics or distracted by the cynics. Remember what the cynic said about Mayor Bradley when he offered an idea as audacious as building mass transit in the car capital of the world? They called it the subway to nowhere. Remember what Mayor Bradley always said? He said, we have the power. From tangible improvements in transportation that have connected people to jobs and jobs to people, to economic development that has breathed new life into our city, we're headed in the right direction. But this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning, and it is not enough. I don't want anyone to think just about what we've accomplished. I want you to imagine how much more that we could do together. You see, Los Angeles is a city where miracles happen every single day. And this is why Los Angeles has always been the destination of so many dreamers from around the world. We can do anything we put our minds to. And we know what we need to do. Angelinos, we can build our future today. We can put people back to work. We can make the promise of a free, quality public education real in the second largest city in the United States. We can overcome our city's tragic legacy of discrimination. We can be a safer city. We can be a closer city. We can be a more connected city. We can do it. Angelinos, let's remember how futures are built. Join me. Together we will build a better future, and we will let common sense serve the common good. Thank you so much. <laughs>